electric propulsion is the future. That much is certain, although there is quite a debate on how it will be applied. In this episode of the American Rail Club, we're taking a fair look of the future of transportation and comparing the Tesla Model 3's autopilot versus taking the train. Take a seat, or in this case, strap on your seatbelt and enjoy the ride. Big shout out to Turo for making this video possible. Turo is way better than a car rental. In a world where you can book a house or a ride share from other people using your phone, Turo books better cars from local hosts across the US and around the world. This gives you the choice to choose from hundreds of unique cars for every occasion and every budget, for up to less than 35% than traditional car rental agencies, whenever and wherever. From Corollas to Corvettes and even Teslas, take your next trip through Turo. And use my referral code in the description when signing up for $25 off your first ride. The service and hosts on Turo are awesome people, and this trip was made so much easier and exciting because of it. It makes a fantastic last mile option in cities you can add to your list, and you don't have to deal with the hidden charges and trickery of car rental companies. Find the perfect car, book it, and grab it and go. Revolutionize your drive and skip the rental car counter with Turo. Now before I continue in, let me be clear. Unfortunately, this won't be a Grand Tour Top Gear type of race. It's a very fair, in-depth and clear perspective of autonomous driving versus riding a train. We're going from Indianapolis, Indiana to Chicago, Illinois, and the only train that actually covers that route is Amtrak's Hoosier State, which has seen far better days, better scheduling, and faster times. Also, the governor and legislature of the great state of Indiana is about to kill the service after years of choking it out. More on that in another video. So there is no contest in terms of driving time versus Amtrak. Your grandma and her Buick Regal would have no problem. Beyond the clown world that is America's failing infrastructure, there are solutions coming into place to fix our ground transportation. One in particular aims to solve not just our pollution issues, but our traffic woes. The Tesla Model 3. The culmination of Elon Musk's promise for an affordable and awesome electric car that looks to usher in the next step of not just electric cars, but for autonomous driving. Already looking at the car, its design is unlike anything else on the road, and instantly recognizable. The interior is also unlike anything else. Modern and minimalist is an understatement here, as all the information and controls for the car is all on one massive iPad touchscreen infotainment system, controlling everything from radio, navigation, climate, windshield wipers, your glove box, and comes with some fun extras stowed away. It's a different take from your typical Lexus ISs, BMW 3 Series, or Mercedes C-Class, and certainly higher quality than your <coughs> overpriced Chevy. Now, unlike your typical high-speed train, you can't get up, stretch, and go to the bathroom while on the move, or order some alcohol. But you can kinda, sorta enjoy looking out the window without driving. Autopilot is touted as the next leap forward for the automotive space, so much so that Elon predicts 50 years from now, our children will be wondering how people even drove two-ton roving death cages. Testing a bit of what the future has in store for us, I thought I'd give it a try. With the new Navigate on Autopilot in the car, me and my girlfriend were able to drive up all the way from Indy to Chicago on dangerous I-65, with very light input from myself to remind the car that yes, I still have a pulse. It's especially helpful in moderate and heavy traffic, Tesla's autopilot drives like a very careful grandpa, the type that wakes up at 9am on Saturdays to mow his lawn. It's refreshing to not have to think in heavy traffic and have the car do it for you, and it's actually quite safe on the road in many conditions. The Model 3 did avoid one collision where a trucker was half asleep or drunk, you can barely tell in Indiana. He swerved into the lane and the Tesla was able to avoid it. Granted, I was on the wheel ready to take over the entire time but realized afterward it was still on autopilot. There are many examples of Tesla saving lives, and this is an absolutely fair point to give for the Tesla company. Their cars are far safer. 
Now, I don't doubt that Elon Musk can get a working autonomous system for Tesla. The benefit of over-the-air updates is that the car is always getting better, and through machine learning, all the cars are connected to an AI neural network and learning how to drive, from inputs like data from its 8 cameras and 12 ultrasonic sensors, system mistakes, and driver mistakes all across the fleet. Kinda like Ultron, but for cars. Elon, this better not kill us all. Tesla is also planning to roll out full city driving sometime this year, meaning the car can drive itself in city traffic and stop at red lights. Then there's the supercharger network. It makes getting cross country easier, cheaper, greener, funner, and unlike the other option that Musk has kind of abandoned, actually plausible. Tesla has solidified itself in the electric car industry through this vital network. None of the big three, the European car makers, nor our lord and savior Toyota, will be able to catch up to currently close to 1,500 supercharging stations worldwide, with the majority of them in the US. The proprietary charging solutions make Tesla the apple of the car world, where you get to charge alongside other fellow Mac cultists, I mean Tesla owners, and avoid rather interesting situations at gas stations. Not to say that Teslas get in their own situations, like dealing with coal rolling dinosaurs. Hey you! Get off of my cloud! Range is still an issue for electric cars. Although 320 miles on the long range model, more than enough to cover the necessary distances between most major cities, compared to 400 in most gas cars. Most commutes fall way under that, and when you drive your electric car home and charge it, you wake up to a full charge, so practically you never have to visit a gas station or a supercharger ever in normal use. So what's the cost of taking one home? The upfront cost of a Tesla is quite expensive. Yes, the average cost for a car transaction in the US is about 36k, and that's less than the 35k Model 3 being touted. However, for most Americans making median wage, the 35k version is just that, a cheaper version of the 3. The cheapest one with autopilot is 45k. Honestly though, no car in that price range has autopilot. Compared to the new Beamer 330i, you're getting a car that is a smidgen faster to go 0 to 60, faster around the track, has more trunk space, and a continuously improving autonomous system. What many argue is that the Model 3 and all electric cars for that matter are actually cheaper in maintenance in the long run, since they don't require oil, gas, or anything that comparatively overly complicated internal combustion engines use. It's also cheaper to fill up. To get the equivalent of 300 miles on a Tesla, it cost me about 13 bucks. In a 330i at combined 31 miles per gallon, that's about 30 bucks in gas equivalent. Electric cars performance-wise have already one up their precious gas cars on the drag strip, the Nürburgring, and on the road. It's the automotive equivalent of Saitama or One Punch Man, a seemingly unassuming exterior ripping apart the competition with just one punch of the accelerator. However, your neighbors will probably get the best benefit out of you owning one, where they don't have to hear the roar of a 2JZ cold start at 6am in the morning. My honest opinion is that the Model 3 represents the future for the car, no doubt as they are becoming more available, cheaper, and people are even trading in their trusty Hondas for it, no joke. Whether us gearheads like it or not, electrics have proved themselves faster, easier to maintain, provide more torque which will be fun once electric pickups start coming out. When it comes to self-driving cars however, some experts and lawmakers are convinced that all they'll have to do is make cities compatible with self-driving cars and traffic will sort itself out magically without a proper train network. To reiterate what I said earlier, autonomous cars will replace the car not the train. Now despite the fact that trains have had the ability of autonomy for far longer, taking a high speed train between two major cities in the same region makes far more sense. To compare moving the same amount of people powered by electricity, the Model 3 has a capacity to seat 5. Your typical Nozomi N700 Shinkansen can move 1,323. 
That means you'll need about 265 Model 3s for that capacity, and that's assuming everyone is buying a 35k car rather than a $100 ticket. On top of that, you can fully relax comfortably in the Shinkansen. You can get up and walk, go to the bathroom, plaster yourself with alcohol, all at close to 200 miles per hour. Now maybe you can get away plaster than the Tesla, but Sergeant Freedom Man isn't going to buy that. Yeah, uh, three cheeseburgers, two large fries, uh, two chocolate shakes, and one large Coke. And some flapjacks. Too early for flapjacks? And then there's the power consumption. The N700 has 22,900 all-electric horsepower. The base rear-wheel drive Model 3 has 260. In total, 265 Model 3s produce in total 68,900 horsepower. Three times as much as the Shinkansen to move the same amount of people. Okay, okay, I know, it isn't exact since it isn't on a kilowatt per hour usage at typical running speed. The only data I can find is from China's bullet train, which consumer recorded 3.8 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometer per passenger. Or, in American, roughly 6.1 kilowatt per hour per 100 miles. The Tesla consumes 26 kilowatt per hour per 100 miles, which means you have to have the car filled to its 5 passenger capacity to reach the same energy consumption per person. And we know that doesn't happen. The majority of Americans commute alone in their car, and that car is most likely a pickup, an SUV, or god forbid the cursed crossover. Funny enough, it used to be our god-given national duty to carpool, but now we can barely figure out how to drive correctly, let alone forget getting car insurance. Hello again! Car accidents kill more people per year than guns. As the dirty icing on death's delicious gas-flavored cake, most of our air pollution comes from driving. Ironically, LA having some of the strictest air pollution laws has the worst air pollution. Hooray for regulation! It's sad to say our American automobile obsession is killing us. And we don't even obsess about it right. We don't even have a speed limit free Autobahn. Elon's sentiments about modern driving in America are correct. Traffic is soul destroying. It's like acid on the soul. It's horrible. We need a change. Some of our meme reviewer lords promises include the Tesla network, an Uber-like application, but driverless. And that's great for last mile trips in cities, especially in one like Chicago where parking is ridiculously expensive and cumbersome to get around, especially when looking to charge your Tesla. However, in most world-class cities like Tokyo, Berlin, Hong Kong, Madrid, and more, the existence of rapid transit gives a very vital option for many to get around, without a direct cost of ownership like a car. Chicago has the L and Metra, which covers the needs of many Chicagoans, and in places like Tokyo, the majority of the population uses the train network, and ride-sharing companies aren't popular over there. What policymakers, urban planners, and other futurists like myself need to understand is that autonomous driving is not a panacea and one-size-fits-all solution. At this point, Tesla dominates everyone in showing a self-driving car without driver input. But as always, market demands and capabilities are always ahead of government thinking and regulation. Congress can barely figure out Twitter or food dispensers, Imagine those poor souls figuring out policy for autonomous vehicles. Christian Walmart in his book Driverless Cars, On a Road to Nowhere, makes very valid points in the discussion of regulation and the practicalities of this new technology. One of those was, quote, The extent to which policymakers, who ought to be more skeptical, are beginning to tailor policies in relation to this unreachable utopia. That is the most dangerous potential consequence of all of this hype. It is understandably seductive to dream of this new world, but also a diversion away from tackling the real and present problems posed by our transport policies. I would like to invite him on the show in a future episode to discuss more. Let me know what you think in the comments below. For the time being, you still need to keep your hands on the wheel for the Model 3 to operate in autopilot. There is still plenty on the road ahead, pun intended for the automobile. To come full circle here, electric propulsion is the future by train and by car. The back and forth on this debate still remains, but we're continually moving forward. Studies claiming that battery production and energy consumption for an electric car causes more pollution are widely flawed, and have been recently debunked by multiple studies. 
and there's plenty industry-wide that can be done to streamline and remove waste out of the process for producing cars and fuel. Have you seen the new car graveyards? Traffic for some cities could actually become worse with autonomous vehicles, a problem that can be addressed by going back to the main purpose of transportation, moving people. Now sure, you can go ahead and build tunnels and stick cars in them one by one, but at that point, you know what, leave it to the kings of tunnel transit, the train. Now as a road tripper, the Model 3 is the smoothest and most easygoing experience I've had ever driving a car, and it does bring back a sparkle in the currently glum automotive industry. It's a bright future, where both electric cars and electric trains will go hand in hand to take our infrastructure to the next level. I will be getting a Model 3 in the near future, but in the meantime, I'll still be working on ultimately bringing high-speed rail to the US, for the day I can fully relax on the train that can drive itself. Nothing is ever going to be perfect, and there's no way we can exactly predict or simulate how our future infrastructure works. We're at a crossroads of technology that is now learning to constantly adapt to our surroundings and with each turn, improve. To answer the question, what's outside the simulation? The answer is options. A world where people can seamlessly move from one location to another in the most convenient, safest, and quickest way possible. The American car is about to evolve, and so too will the American train. Who wins? We all do. Thank you all for writing. If you enjoy the content we bring to you, be sure to subscribe to ARC by clicking subscribe and pull that bell. Here's a picture featured on Instagram by Starforce97. And be sure to follow us on Instagram and tag us for a chance to be featured next. Getting the word out on Better Transit America is made possible by you. Share this video with your friends, it's no cost and everyone is welcome aboard. You can support ARC further by upgrading your ticket to ride by supporting us on Patreon where, for a limited time, you can get this Make America's Railroads Great Again cap through pledging. And there's only a few left, and yes, they're made in America, so act fast. Thank you for your support. Next stop, the future.